some art tips and rambles with Rafi. Hola, you amazing artists. It's Rafi. And Klee. If you're watching this on YouTube, that means that today you will be watching Klee creating one of her Tree of Life pendants. Yes, indeed. We're going to be talking about being busy making a living and not forgetting to actually make a life and things like that. So our conversation is going to get a little bit deep. But while we are conversing, man, you get to see Klee create something that is absolutely amazing. I hope you guys enjoy. We are like... Balls to the wall. Yeah, it's the mad dash to get the last of the holiday orders out. Yeah, because tomorrow, tomorrow's the last day for shipping. Well, well technically it's, it's Friday, but look, I never trust that. It's supposed to be the 21st, but usually packages are at least a day or two late. So that's why on our website we announced that like the last possible day that you could have purchased something from us was Sunday. Sunday. So that way it gives us enough time to finish these commissions and get them shipped out by tomorrow. Yeah. So yeah, other than the Mad Dash, I released the ebook yesterday. Yeah, you did. Yeah, I am terrified. Yeah, I know. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I am absolutely terrified. I'm like, I'm, I'm waiting for, so far it's been a good response. Everybody that's been reading the book says, oh my God, I love it so far. I love it so far. But you know, there's that voice in your head. Whenever you do anything creative, that's like, yeah, but they haven't gotten to the part that sucks yet, you know? Like- I know, I know. You're <laughs> waiting on pins and needles for someone to be like, you suck! Yeah, you suck! Yeah, and I'm sure that that's not going to happen. And, uh, you know, I, I love the people that purchased the book. These are people that follow us here on YouTube. These are people that have been following our career for a while, people that we know. Um, and I, I know that that's not going to happen. I wouldn't put a piece of crap out there. Of course not. Um, it's the same thing with the artwork though. You know, like you put a piece of artwork out there and chances are somebody's going to love it and somebody's going to hate it. And you're gonna, you gotta be prepared for both of those responses. So I think that's my mind trying to get me ready for the, for the you suck response. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Your mind is trying to protect you. <laughs> okay. So with the busy, crazy holiday season, um, yesterday we did a Patreon Monday motivation video. We do a Monday motivation video. Try to do it every Monday morning. Yep. For the Monday motivation video, what we do is either Klee or I will pick a quote and then we, uh, we talk about it. We go from there and it's supposed to like motivate our week. So we do it for ourselves, but we also like to share it with our patrons. Yeah. It's one of my favorite things. And yesterday yesterday i was the one that got to pick the quote and it actually uh almost made you cry yeah yeah so here's the quote so you guys know it says never get so busy making a living that you forget to make a life yeah that one really hit home for me yeah especially right now because it is a mad dash to get all the christmas orders out and i've been having minor freakouts every morning uh that i'm gonna let everyone down and that um that I suck, basically. Yeah, that's one of the biggest challenges that we have as uh, creatives, as artists. Our own mind is going to be uh, trying to level the playing field by uh, setting you to a place where you're smaller than what you're actually doing. Almost like everything that is going on, you know, you're not good enough. You're not going to be able to pull this off. If you have a lot of commissions, you're not good enough uh, to be able to get it all done. You're going to fail miserably. If uh, it's crickets for you, if you don't have any commissions, then that voice is like, the reason that it's slow is because you suck and nothing is working out for you. Yeah, it's interesting when you have like a not so great mentality happening that you could be on either end of that stick and be telling yourself that you suck. That right there is a perfect representation of what's going on inside of your brain. If inside of your mind... Uh, you have a negative outlook, it doesn't matter if you're doing well. Like a lot of people wait until like, oh, you know, they, they sit around, they're like, I wish I had a lot of commissions and I wish I had a lot of this or or that I made a lot of sales this year. Oh, I wish I was in your position. I'm not selling anybody. In fact, one of our YouTube subscribers, that was the comment that they said is like, nothing is going on for me. I know what it feels like to be in that position because, Mm -hmm. you know, we've been doing this for 10 years and the first five years, it was like crickets. They weren't banging down our door to get the things the first couple of years. Yeah, exactly. When you have a negative mindset and nothing is going on, you're going to sit there and talk yourself down. You're going to be like, you know, you're not good enough. This is why you're stuff sucks this is why you have no commissions or anything but the interesting thing is that that can carry over into uh when you are busy yeah 
Absolutely. I think that that is one of those things that people don't think about. It's it, it all starts with you. It starts with where your mind is. If things are slow and your mind is uh, shit, then you know things are going to feel like shit. If things are busy and your mind is shit, then things are going to feel like shit. Yeah. And if you are in a good place mentally and emotionally, when things are slow, you can make the most of it. And if you are in a good place mentally and emotionally when things are, you know, hella busy, you can make the most of that too. And it, that's, that's the simplicity of it. It always comes down to what is happening in your mind. Can you make the most of a situation or are you just feeling like a victim to your circumstances? Yeah. And most of the time you need to have a sit down with yourself, whatever the situation is and be like, all right, look, self, (laughs) (laughs) you got this. If you're having slow times, use the time to design new things and have fun. If you're hella busy, then at least try to make a good time of it. Right. Because really, like, I don't want to be putting stressed out energy into any of the pieces that I'm creating ever. Right. And I also want to have a good time. This is my life. Yeah. As the quote says, it's not just my livelihood. This is my life. This is how I'm spending my time. So am I able to have a good time even when it's really, really busy? Knowing that I'm not going to let anyone down. I'm going to do everything in my human capability to get everyone their holiday orders. Exactly. The idea that you're going to let somebody down is basically just a a system or, or a reaction to the circumstances that you're used to doing. Have you ever let anybody down when it comes to whether or not you've been... Busy with a lot of commissions or not a lot of commissions. Never. You know? No, you always do your best. And mm-hmm. that's really what it comes down to. You do your best. Whether or not somebody's let down by something that you were incapable of doing, that's that's their problem. Like, you know, that's those are their reactions to what is going on. It, there's been plenty of times where I've been in a business transaction with somebody and they were not able to get it done by the deadline. Mm-hmm. And they had every reason in the world to not be able to get it done by the deadline. And it wasn't like I was disappointed or held that against them. Yeah. And really, if there's clear communication happening, then it's okay. Yeah, exactly. Now, if they are lying to me and they're telling me that they could get it done, but then they don't, then that's where the disappointment sets in. But I think that if you're totally honest with yourself and with the people that you have a transaction going with, um, then there's there's no room for disappointment there. Uh, this holiday season, even though it has been the busiest holiday season of all time for us, I had some really awesome emails come in pertaining to some of the orders and the sentiment behind them and how sweet they were. And I took the time to communicate with those people yeah. because that's really why I do this. You know, these pieces are special. They mean stuff to people. Exactly. And so it was really great for me to be able to take that time and email back and forth and find out exactly what is the meaning behind these pieces so that I can make them extra special. I think that that's the key is remembering why it is that you do what you do. We all get started doing this uh, for a reason. And the reason doesn't have to do with financial. I mean, come on, it's it's art. You're creating an art career. So it's not like I'm going to become an artist because that is the easiest way to make money. <laughs> like that is, that, is not, that is not what gets us started. It has to do with a passion. It has to do with connection. We all have different reasons why it is that we create art. And the longer that you do this or the more focused you are on making it a career where, you know, finances and, and business and uh, reputation taxes and, and taxes and administrative, administrative of tasks get involved the easier it is to start to take yourself and the business side of it seriously yeah and think that that's where that's where the advantage is you know like a lot of people will look at me and be like well your advantage is that uh you have a youtube channel and that you're good at marketing and you're good at this and you're good at that not realizing that okay sure that's that's now and none of that means that I'm good at it. It just means that I've been failing at it, at it way longer than anybody else. Uh, for the first five or six years, we had zero traffic coming to us from the internet. Yeah. And we were just getting known in our small town, you know, and, and within five, four years, then we became small town famous, which mm-hmm. is not really famous, but we became small town famous because we put a lot of work into it, but we were just having fun. Yeah, that was really a key thing. We were trying things, we were having fun together, and the energy that we were putting out there was one of fun. Yeah, 
because if you're not having fun, it's going to lead to burnout. If you're doing if you're doing a lot of shows because you're like, oh, this is exciting. I've never done this before. I got to blah, 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 blah. You know, and you get out there and you're doing shows kind of like we were. We were doing a ton of shows, mm-hmm. which hindsight is great marketing because you're getting out there in front of a whole bunch of people. But we were ha- and we were having fun. So we were leaving a lasting impression on everybody. Yeah. Even when the circumstances were craptastic, we were really having a good time laughing it off. And- oh, yeah. We did so many shows where we made zero money yeah. like so many shows so many and it, it it's hilarious to me because i'll have people that will go out and do their their first or second show and they'll be like i made no money and i'm like uh it's par for the course it's par for the course dude like this is not about getting out there and making money this is about getting yourself out there and seeing what kind of person you are are you the kind of person that gets discouraged and you give up because, oh, I didn't make money at this show. I'm supposed to make money. Or are you the kind of person that just sticks with it and finds the different reasons, the real reasons behind why it is that you do it? It's not just about the finances. If you make it all about the finances and the business side, then you're getting lost. Why are you an artist? You might as well become a, an accountant or, or something else, something that has to do with finances and business. Yeah. And if you are busy and you go into full on production mode, as I call it, where yeah. you're just cranking out pieces and you 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 can also easily forget why you're doing what you're doing in that sense, too. And I really like even now, 10 years in, when I finish a piece, I still (gasps) look at it, stare at it. Rafi laughs at me because I stare at finished pieces for a long time. She'll sit over at her bench and she'll just like sit there and stare at a piece and pick it up and look at it and then put it down and then look at it. And I'm (laughs) I think that's I think that's the cutest thing ever. And it's hilarious. It's like, oh, that's the staring portion of the creating, huh? And I'm like, yeah, but it's really like taking the time to appreciate what you're creating. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's that's why we're creatives. That's why we're not just getting into a business. I mean, really, if it were about the finances, then there's plenty of other things out there that are way easier to sell than art and uh, jewelry. You know, like these, these are luxury items to some people. Like when they look at it, those are luxury products. Mm -hmm. You want to get into a business where it's easy for you to make money, then sell things that are necessary for people to survive. But if you are creating something and don't get me wrong, I believe that artwork and jewelry and all that stuff that is necessary for people to survive. The world would be lost if it were just black and white business finances with no art. But in order to actually sell a genuine thing, I think that the reasoning behind the creating has to be honest and you have to be creating because that is what you want to do and you have to remember why it is that you're creating. Yeah, it's easy to lose sight of that in the beginning when you're kind of desperate and trying to make a sale. But it's also extremely easy to lose sight of that when you are busy and your business has taken off. And it's something that we constantly have to like reevaluate and look at. Especially this time of year. So like yesterday, I had approximately 1 billion orders to finish and it's getting down to the wire. And I also had domestic things like I was doing laundry all day and like you were tidying up around the house and you also have a billion things going on. And, you know, we just put on the music really loud and have the best possible time we can. Yeah, exactly. And that that's the thing. It's in those moments of overwhelm, stress or discouragement that you have to remind yourself, really remind yourself why it is that you're doing what you do. That it, That is the most important time to do it. Now, a lot of times when it comes to that, sometimes you have to give yourself a wake-up call, which is why uh, I'll stand there, look at the studio, and actually have uh, what people would consider a morbid thought. Like, I'll look at the studio and think, like, right now, the way that I'm behaving, the way that I'm feeling, is this how I want to spend the last moment of my... Oh, like, what if this were the last moment of my life? Yeah. And I'm totally stressed out. I'm thinking about, I got to put these orders out and I got to get this done and I got to get in and not looking at my uh, commissions as works of art, but looking at my commissions as products that need to get done. That's not how I want to live my life (laughs) in the last moments, nor any single singular day of my life do I want to be like that. I think that thought a lot too, and it really does help put things into perspective. What if today was my last day? And I'm here making my my art, and how do I want to feel? Yeah. And I'm here with you, and how do I want to feel and interact with you? And look, guys, I'm going to use the word, okay? Gratitude. Yep. I feel tremendous gratitude 
for the art studio that we have, for the life that I have, for the people that support us, for the people that keep us busy as all get out at Christmas time. The word gratitude gets parroted a lot by a lot of people. There are some people out there that, that I, I feel like when they use it, they, they know what they're talking about. And there's people out there that use it because they heard it somewhere and they're like, gratitude, you have to feel gratitude. Yeah. When you were sitting there and you're looking around and you're like, I'm so overwhelmed or everything's horrible or nothing is going on or, or I, uh, my life sucks or anything like that. And you walk over to the sink and you wash your hands. You have running water. That's something to be grateful for. Yeah, I often think about running water. Yeah. When I was out in the Dominican Republic for a while, I lived out there for a few months uh, staying with my my aunt. And um, the house across from us had no electricity, no water, no windows, no doors. It was basically just a concrete structure. And there was an entire family that lived in there. And they used to have to go down to get water. Now, here I am, this spoiled little American kid who the first day I was in the Dominican Republic, we had no electricity because the power, it, the power was off more so than the power was on. Mm -hmm. And my biggest thing was like, I need ice cubes. I don't have ice cubes to realize that like I was sitting there complaining about things when people had so much less than I did. Mm hmm. You know, like my life is a luxury. I am like a wealthy billionaire compared to what a lot of these people were experiencing day to day. Nowadays, here I am making a living with my art, uh, married to the love of my life, have an awesome studio, have an awesome life. And I could still turn around and turn that into a negative thing if I let my mind go that way. Yeah, I think everyone's capable of feeling sorry for themselves. I sure can with the best of them. Feel yeah. sorry for myself. I think about myself like 15 years ago. Had I met me now, and if I was sitting there complaining about the things that I complain about now, 15 year ago me would be like, you, you're you an idiot. Idiot. Yeah. <laughs> so... And that's the thing. It's just reminding yourself. Obviously, there is always room for improvement. Yeah. But it is stopping and taking a look and realizing like, you know what? My life is pretty good. And if you're and, and if you're evaluating and your life is not good, if you are in a really not good situation, then at that point, you have to take it into your own hands and decide like, you know what? Uh, I need out of this or yeah. I, I need a change. This is not working. I need to change what's going on in my life. But at least that way you're taking a look. If you just get used to complaining about things all the time, it's almost like you get numb to it. Mm -hmm. Like you just complain and complain and complain and it just becomes part of your modus operandi and you don't you don't even realize when things are good, uh, you know, you're still going to complain about something. When things are bad, you're going to complain even more. And I think it's just stopping and having those moments where you give uh, a real appreciation for what is going on in your life and an appreciation for the fact that you could change the things in your life that you don't like. Yeah, I think that's really at the core of it. I think the bottom line here is it's really easy to be on autopilot when things are good and when they're not good. It's really easy to just be on autopilot a lot. Yeah. And um, that's not an enjoyable state yeah. to live in yeah and especially as artists man because we are observers of the world we're the ones that are translating uh what it is that we experience into tangible works you know yeah. and so as an artist we have to be aware of not only what is going on around us but what is going on inside of us and and it is easy it is very easy to be on autopilot and just kind of run through whatever programming it is that you think you have and not uh, really, really experience fully what that moment is all about. I think that's why I have such a tremendous love and appreciation for Bill Murray. Oh, because yeah. um, he's such a weird guy and he does so many random things. And we watched a documentary and the motivation for the things that Bill Murray does and the random places he shows up at is um, t to keep himself out of autopilot and to do that for other people. To yeah. snap them out of whatever... Uh, whatever state they're in. Yeah, and that that yeah, that's brilliant. Always do something that pushes you outside of your comfort zone because you experience new things. Yeah. If you're just running through the same programming over and over and over, there is no growth there. 
No. It is doing these things that are outside of your comfort zone or taking a look around and changing your perspective instead of just running the same thing that really, really changes your experience of life. And that's where that's where I believe that happiness actually lies in. In the dynamic human experience. Yeah, the dynamic human experience. All right, and that's that's it. I think we got a little bit deep in that one. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> to lighten things, I'm going to read the quote again. And okay. the quote is, never get so busy making a living that you forget to make a life. Yeah, that brought some moisture to my eyeballs yesterday. Yeah. And um, still today, I'll close out with, uh, I didn't think I had time to do this podcast this morning because yeah. I still have a lot of orders to do today. But the fact of the matter is, I love this. Yeah. And I love our YouTube family. Yeah. And our family that listens to our podcast wherever you're listening from. Right. I love you guys. Yeah. And I don't want to miss moments like this. Yeah. And I don't want to miss moments like this either. And uh, with that, we are going to sign off. Obviously, you guys know that we're pretty busy. So we're going to try to keep up with the podcast and with the YouTube videos. The most important thing for me is that we don't stress out trying to do things that's just impossible. So, so we're winging it. Yeah, we're winging it. We're winging it as we go but you will definitely hear from us before the holidays hit yeah and uh we'll uh we'll be thinking about you guys as we are cranking stuff out here in the studio with loud music <laughs> with loud music and a little bit of dancing and a lot of fun yeah and thank you so much for listening you guys you guys are absolutely freaking amazing i totally adore you and if you like this and you want to listen to more like this, which is totally a ramble podcast, uh, go ahead and click somewhere around here to subscribe. I'm not sure where. And that's it. Say goodbye, Clee. Good day. Adios.